Welcome back into the GSMC Sports Podcast as we look ahead to tonight's game between the Dallas Mavericks and the Boston Celtics. For this Game 4 matchup, the Mavericks trying to hold off elimination as they are down 0-3 in this series, get a home game, and ultimately, you know, I feel like we are at the point in the NBA where sweeps are just so rare, especially when you talk about a comparison between these two teams where I believe that, you know, the Celtics have always been the better team than the Mavericks, but at the same time, the Mavericks have... I would say the best player in the series in Luka Doncic. Obviously, he's not the most popular man in NBA media with the Game 3 bad performance from him, which is understandable, but still, we are really yet to see the brilliance from him. And I feel like that is absolutely still on the table. He and Kyrie Irving, we know the individual talent there, especially on the offensive side of the ball. And it's interesting because when you look at this series, as much as it feels like the Mavericks have really struggled to... Um, you know, keep pace with the Celtics by any means, it's not for a lack of defending the Celtics, where is typically where we feel like the Celtics are a three-point shooting team, that they're this elite offense, and they are statistically, but this series has been about the Mavericks not being able to score enough points, where they've been held to under 100 points in every single game so far this series and it is a situation where that has to be held on Luka and Kyrie and I understand of course the other role players need to do a better job and ultimately when you look at the personnel on the court for the Mavericks there just isn't necessarily that other creator for them for them to take over but at the same time there needs to be in that same argument a way for Luka and Kyrie to try and find a way to get these other players involved and again easier said than done when you talk about the switchability of this Celtics offense but or the Celtics defense I should say and that sort of brings me into the point of during game three we saw Luca and Kyrie repeatedly try and try and hunt out these matchups against the Celtics bench players, Sam Hauser, Xavier Tillman, Peyton Pritchard, and try and take these guys one on one. And more times than not, the Celtics defense was able to hold up in those ISO situations because of the fact that they knew Luca was trying to play to the refs and he was going to try and draw fouls. And ultimately, again, I thought that it was just an extremely well-coached game where we looked at a couple possessions of Sam Hauser in the switch and Peyton Pritchard in these switches where uh, specifically the Pritchard one where Luca had him in the short corner trying to back him down and Pritchard just dropped his shoulder when Luca was trying to jump into him and get the foul call to go. And that's just the scouting of the Celtics. And that's something that obviously Luka is going to need to work on for years to come here. But it's also something that for him, he spoke to Malika Andrews of ESPN in an interview following that Game 3 loss. And he talked about just trying to have fun again in these games. And we saw, you know, during that fourth quarter, the Mavericks were able to build build some things going they understood that the refs weren't calling a lot of these fouls and they were being more aggressive defensively and trying to shut down the Celtics Luca for and obviously Luca ends up fouling out of this game I mean again he was kind of asking for it because of the fact that he was complaining to the refs the entire way through and as much as you know, he he. I think that he sort of walked it back a little bit with his comments yesterday. But when he's talking about the refs need to be better, six fouls in the NBA Finals, you can't just bank on the fact that you are a star and that you shouldn't get you should get calls in your favor. Where I think that that's something that Jason Tatum, as Kelsey says in the comments section, he insults the officials. He's barking at them every single time. Jason Tatum, on the other end. You know, he really struggled also arguing with the refs for a very large portion of his career. 
and it seems like now that he's starting to put that behind him, he is able to evolve from a maturity standpoint to a certain degree. And for Luca, I mean, it's not just the barking at the officials, it's the fact that he just kind of sits there and pouts at times after he tries to go up and score on the offensive end, and he'll just sit there for a minute upset. And the Celtics got those breaks the other way. And as much as the Mavericks definitely deserve some credit for the way that they played in the fourth quarter, it was also Celtics self implosion, where there were two different instances where Luka didn't get back on defense. Now, Al Horford ended up with the ball running up the court for the Celtics for some reason, and he turned the ball over both of those times just because that's not the guy you want running the break from you for you if you're the Celtics. But those very easily could have been buckets that, again, helped to weather the storm. And ultimately, the Celtics, they come out on top here. So it is no big deal. Um, as we have a co comment from Kelsey, I'm not quite sure what you mean, but oh, I got it. She said eating horse burgers as in the Mavericks. It took me a second there um, while reading it out loud. Uh, good one, Kelsey. But I think that, you know, the Celtics did a lot of the damage to themselves in those minutes. Yes, I got it now. Um, but for for the Mavs, again, that just seemed like an opportunity where if you're Luka, you understand that the series is, you know, sort of in the balance in those moments where it is a massive momentum swing going into game four. It's so redundant to say almost, but obviously the difference between being down 3-0 and 2-1 is everything in the NBA and really in sports in general, but especially in the NBA. And it just feels like, you know, that's where he has to be better. And hopefully when he makes these comments to Malika Andrews of he just wants to have fun again, that he can just play this game as much as personally I'm a Celtics fan. You want to see Luka because his skill set when he's actually firing and he's not arguing with the refs and he's doing what we know he can is so fun. And the complete tearing down of him as his character and who he is as a basketball player because of that Game 3 performance is unfair in my eyes and it is not indicative of who he is. As Kelsey says, Luka can learn from this. And, you know, I was listening to some Boston radio because I, I do it every once in a while, not something that necessarily uh, I do too often because of some of the narratives that they push out. But I'm just hearing about how much of a loser Luca is. And, you know, if he doesn't win a championship next year, that automatically makes him a loser. That's just, we can't view sports from that lens. Luca is the only reason the Mavericks are in the finals right now. Or I should at least say the biggest reason, not to completely diminish the rest of the team. But that being said, you know, Luke, the Mavericks are 100% not in this position if it isn't for Luca. So. It doesn't have to be this entire, you know, degrading of Luka as a person and the type of basketball player he is and the maturity level with him, but he does have to learn from this, from his conditioning. I think mentally is the conversation that came into play after game three. I think that physically it, that is also a conversation where he was getting looks at the rim throughout that fourth quarter but he just was not able to hit because he, he, I think that he was tired at that point and the way that the game was being played, it was very physical all the way throughout and it just seemed like it got to him by the end of the game. And again, all these things, you know, Luca's still just 25 years old. So trying to label him as anything negative and saying there's no way he can overcome this is a ridiculous concept to me. I feel like a couple years ago, I sort of came to the realization of putting caps on people is just kind of a ridiculous way to go about this sports discourse. Obviously, we can talk about limitations of players and, you know, it but ultimately, again, to 
state things as impossibilities when a player is 25 years old and he's still learning sort of on the fly. This is his first experience of anything like this, of making the NBA Finals. Obviously had a ton of accomplishments for himself in Europe. I don't think that it has to be this massive referendum of who he is. Uh, no, I am in Massachusetts. I am in Boston. I'm going to be going into Boston tonight, that is, to hopefully be celebrating a Celtics championship. But, you know, I to the question that is on the screen right now, do the Mavericks have any chance of coming back? Ultimately... I think the answer is no. To be able to win four straight games against this Celtics team, the Celtics have been the best roster in the NBA all season long. So it's just not something that I think they can fully overcome. That being said, game four tonight, I have a hard time picking sweeps in the NBA ever because with the three-point variance and with the level of talent that there is, in the NBA, I just think that it's a little bit rare, especially when you want to dive into the psychological perspective of humans, you know, the level of desperation that you play with. That being said, the Celtics, it feels like they were willing to give up a little bit in that fourth quarter of game three, and the fact that the Mavericks weren't able to take advantage when the Celtics had their eyes on bigger things and they were caught up in the moment, that feels like it is going to be detrimental ultimately Mavericks are favored tonight so I don't know if I necessarily would advise you to pick one way or the other the Mavs have a great chance tonight but as for the series as a whole I don't think it happens now great chance this could happen uh, coming back to Boston on Monday night but I think that this series is just about a wrap, but definitely be sure, be sure to let us know in the comment section your thoughts on whether or not we could see the improbable. But we're going to be taking our final break of the show now when we come back on the other side. want to dive into the sanctions that the NFL put out against the Atlanta Falcons for tampering in order to get Kirk Cousins and whether or not it was enough. So stick with us. We will be right back after this quick break. <laughs> 